Now we have a basic understanding of exposure. Let's dive a little deeper. Camera exposure is controlled by these three elements. Aperture, shutter, and ISO. The aperture is actually the opening controlled by the iris in the lens. The aperture's job is to adjust the amount of light entering the camera. We use the F numbers to control how open or closed the iris is. In dark conditions, where more light is needed, the size of the aperture we select will be larger. Numbers such as F2 or F4 indicate a large aperture. In bright conditions, where less light is needed, the size of the aperture we select will be smaller. Numbers like F16 or F22 indicate a small aperture. This is where you can find aperture readings on your camera. With many DSLR cameras, the shutter is a mechanical device just in front of the image sensor. It opens to let light in so that the sensor can register the light to form an image. We use the shutter speed to control the shutter. In dark conditions, where more light is needed, the shutter opens for a longer duration. In bright conditions, where less light is needed, the shutter opens for a shorter duration. This is where you can find the shutter readings on your camera. To make things a little easier to understand, picture two buckets which we will call exposure. Now, a small hose and another large hose. Let's equate the size of each hose to the aperture. Now, let's fill each bucket with water and call the time to fill the bucket shutter speed. Using the large hose, we will fill the bucket faster, requiring a shorter filling time. In the same way that, with a large aperture, we get more light, requiring a shorter exposure time. And using the small hose, we will fill the bucket slower, requiring a longer filling time. In the same way that, with a small aperture, we get less light, requiring a longer exposure time. So you may ask, how can I see the aperture and shutter working together? Well, grab your camera and try this. Set the camera to aperture priority. In this setting, we set the aperture and the camera will set the correct shutter speed to suit the lighting conditions. Here, we begin with a large aperture of f2.8. Watch what the camera does to the shutter as we reduce the aperture to f22. As the aperture gets smaller, the light reduces and the camera chooses a slower shutter speed to compensate. Let's do the reverse and take control of the shutter. Set your camera to shutter priority. Here, we set the shutter speed and the camera will set the correct aperture to suit the lighting conditions. We begin with a fast shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second. Watch the aperture change as we increase the shutter duration to 1 60th of a second. As the shutter slows, the light increases and the camera chooses a smaller aperture to compensate. ISO is all about how sensitive your camera is to the light available. The sensor is rather special because it can increase or decrease its sensitivity to light. In dark conditions, where more light is needed, we can increase the sensitivity to extract more information. In bright conditions, where less light is needed, we can decrease the sensitivity to take in less information. To get a clearer understanding, let's go back to our bucket illustration. Remember that hose size equals aperture, time to fill the bucket equals shutter speed. Let's add a sieve with a certain number of holes that represents ISO. One hole equaling 100 ISO, two holes, 200 ISO, four holes, 400 ISO, and so on. Keeping our hose size constant, the buckets should fill at the same speed. Placing the sieve between the hose and the bucket will affect the speed at which our buckets will fill. Our four-hole sieve will fill the bucket four times faster than our one-hole sieve. Relating that back to our sensor, 400 ISO is four times more sensitive to light than 100 ISO. In low light, we need more sensitivity, so a high ISO setting. And in bright light, we need less sensitivity, so a lower ISO setting. So what's manual exposure? As the name suggests, this is where you are in full control to decide the shutter, 
aperture and ISO settings. Scary? Well, not really. Help is at hand. You may have noticed this exposure scale in your viewfinder. When the pointer is in the middle, it is indicating a correct exposure. And when the pointer is to the right, it is indicating overexposure. When the pointer is to the left, it is indicating underexposure. By adjusting your aperture, shutter and ISO settings, you can use this pointer to help you attain the ideal exposure. With manual exposure, we can get adventurous by creatively over or underexposing. Interesting images may not be technically correctly exposed, so don't be afraid to experiment a little with your exposures. Let's have a quick recap of what we've covered while looking at the finer points of exposure. Exposure and aperture, exposure and shutter, exposure and ISO, how all three work together, and manual exposure. Now that you're familiar with exposure, make sure you check out the other tutorials in the series to see how else you can take creative control of your camera.